Hey y'all, everyone here at Peloton U, your advising team, your coaches, the student support coordinators, Hudson, Sarah, and Lee, we want you to know we've been thinking of you all. We know so many folks and communities are facing some really tough challenges right now, and we always wanna offer whatever support we can that is meaningful to you and yours. So today we wanna share a brief overview of some resources for folks who might wanna file for unemployment, and also address some additional resources for our DACA students, as well as folks who are undocumented. My name is Adria, and I'm a Peloton U coach. And with me today is the lovely Evelyn. Evelyn, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name's Evelyn. I am a peer coach here at Peloton U, and I'm super excited to help you. Wonderful, okay. So let's start with a quick overview of unemployment in our COVID-19 world. The graphic that you see on your screen um, is from the Texas Workforce Commission, which is the organization that provides unemployment benefits to eligible individuals and businesses. What I really like about this image is that it shows us how the federal government has expanded both who is eligible and also what benefits those eligible individuals um, can receive because of COVID-19. So if you look in the top left-hand corner and we just go across those four boxes across the top, the first box um, includes people who already are approved for unemployment benefits. The second box includes folks who are eligible for regular unemployment benefits, but they just haven't applied yet. And then the third box is, is really cool. This is where um, the work that the federal government has been doing to expand unemployment benefits is really important. This is the group that is typically considered non-traditional applicants. So that means it's folks who are not eligible for regular unemployment insurance under the regular rules, including independent contractors, people who are self-employed, and those without sufficient wages. Um, but under these new rules, they, are now, they now have the opportunity to be eligible. And then that fourth box are folks who have exhausted unemployment benefits. So this might be someone who has already applied and they've already used up the amount that they're allotted to have. And what's really great about this particular um, image is that it's showing us that all four of those categories um, may be eligible for continued benefits, including additional time. So an additional 13 weeks of benefits and an additional $600 per week until July 31st of 2020. Um, so the point here is to show how uh, unemployment benefits have been expanded. So whatever group that you might fall in, um, there's an opportunity for you that you might be eligible for additional benefits, even if you are traditionally not eligible. So just keep that in mind. So every case is unique and we at Peloton U can't tell you if you'll be approved for unemployment benefits, but we can help you prepare to apply. On this next slide, what you see is the basic eligibility information. So to apply for unemployment benefits, you must have U.S. citizenship or work authorization. Your past earnings in the previous year must meet certain minimum thresholds. Um, some folks that we know applied and were denied, they applied like mid-March, right when COVID-19 first hit and they were laid off from work. Um, but as of April 5th, the Texas Workforce Commission changed the dates that they're looking at to determine your past earnings. So before April 5th, they were looking back at 2018. But as of April 5th, 5th on, they're looking at January 2019 to December 2019. And what this means is that some folks who were denied unemployment benefits are actually eligible. There's no uh, action needed on your part. You don't need to appeal. You don't need to call. The Texas Workforce Commission is going through and looking at those applications again to determine if they are eligible under these new rules. That means it's going to take a little while, but they will offer back pay if you're approved. So that's, that's hopeful. Um, you must also have earned at least some of your past year wages in the state of Texas, and you must be ready, willing, and available to work. In addition to the eligibility criteria, you also need some documentation before you apply. You want to have it handy. So the first thing you need is your name, social security number, birth date, and contact information. If you're not a U.S. citizen or national, you need that alien registration number. And then you also need your complete work history for the past 18 months. So again, that's January 2019 till now. Um, your employer names, address, and phone numbers, the start and end dates of employment for each employer, the number of hours worked and the pay rate, 
and then information related to your normal wage. And that sounds a little funny, but all that means is, is what do people who normally have um, a similar job to you, what do they normally make? And then if you want to sign up for direct deposit, your bank account and routing number would also be good to have handy. When you apply, applying online is still best. We continue to hear stories about the website crashing or people having a difficult time getting through calling. Um, the Texas Workforce Commission is expanding their technology to try to keep their website functioning at its best, even though they have so many people applying. And they also have opened eight additional call centers to handle the volume of phone calls that they're receiving. They have some recommended call and access times based on your area code. So that's something that's helpful. But they also just had in the news today that one of the best times to call is during non-peak hours, which would be between midnight and 5 a.m. If you apply online, it's really important that when you apply, you select disaster for the reason of unemployment. This is just gonna get you moving quicker through the unemployment process, the application process. If you don't select it, it's not a big deal. It just means that um, they, it might take a little bit more time for them to determine that you're applicable and eligible under the new COVID-19 regulations for unemployment benefits. So with that said, I'm gonna turn it over to Evelyn, who's gonna share a little bit more about additional resources. So information for folks under DACA, they do qualify for unemployment benefits as well, as long as they meet the same eligibility requirements as U.S. citizens. Uh, the additional information that you will need to provide is your ADA registration number. If you have employment, an employment authorization card, like the one pictured across, it's a nine-digit number listed under USCIS number. If you have not renewed your DACA, we encourage you to renew it now or as quickly as possible. Despite USCIS offices being closed due to COVID-19, they're still processing your new application. Um, after applications are processed and approved, they do reuse your previous application biometric information as well, just to avoid any contact with others. The Supreme, the U.S. Supreme Court is still making a decision about DACA sometime between now and June or late July. So if your work authorization expires in the next six months, you're eligible to renew now. If you're reapplying and would like a lawyer's assistance, Juan de Cruz is a great immigration lawyer in the Austin area. Uh, just mention the results of to me, and he can give you a $200 discount on those services that he provides, and he's a great immigration lawyer. Um, as well as for staff member Rodolfo, he is holding an info session for DACA. Uh, it'll be a virtual information session on the state of DACA and why it's important to stay on top of it now more than ever. Uh, he'll be sharing some resources that Tom on you staff members have found for DACA members, and anyone and everybody is welcome to join that meeting. Uh, the information is sent out in the all student email, but if you want to share it to folks that you know are documented, let them know for sure. They're all welcome to join. As far as for the undocumented folks, unfortunately, they do not qualify for unemployment benefits. However, there are still programs that they qualify for, such as the um, Food Assistance Program, and that's for low-income women who are pregnant, breastfeeding, or on postpartum. Uh, the National Fund. We'll also provide a need-based financial help for immigrants who are hit hard by the pandemic this Friday, April 24th. So as soon as the application opens, we highly recommend to call and apply. Um, as well as the Undocumented Life, they've created a website filled with lots of different resources and scholarships for immigrant students. Um, and the City of Austin Council has also allocated $15 million as of April 9th for the reserves of the release in a state of emergency, also known as the RISE Fund. Recipients of the RISE Fund must meet certain requirements to be eligible, including an income level at or below 200% of the poverty line, significant hardships experienced from the coronavirus, and ineligibility for assistance from the federal stimulus package. The Catholic Charities of Central Texas will begin uh, giving out that assistance to from the virus fund this April 27th. Um, a Buen Samaritano is taking calls right now and we'll start seeing applications by appointment only and begin beginning the week of the 27th, so Monday. 
Um, and then the Austin area Urban League has also have set up a hotline for anyone seeking help. Um, their phone number is 512-838-3442 in English, and then 512-900-1598 for Spanish folks. Uh, and then I'm going to turn it back to Adria. Thanks, Evelyn. Okay, so there are a couple other additional resources that we just wanted to point out to you. The first one we came across thanks to our wonderful Peloton U student, Jessica Garay. Um, she actually works with Workforce Solutions Capital Area, and they are a fantastic resource. Um, they have all sorts of uh, support for um, general questions about unemployment benefits, including assistance with your PIN number, if you've misplaced your PIN number or can't remember it. Um, they help with job searches, child care for essential workers, um, trainings that you may qualify for and that they will pay for. So there's some awesome support from our friends at Workforce Solutions, and many thanks to Jessica for flagging this for us and teaching us about these resources. Additionally, our wonderful Peloton U coach, Cynthia Suarez, has created and continues to update um, our Peloton U COVID-19 resource document. So you've probably seen this in emails from your coaches, but it's important to know that this is always updated and that we also include in it the Workforce Solutions uh, job search, which they're always updating every single day about available jobs. So in that document, you can find all sorts of um, resources about uh, food resources, uh, employment opportunities, um, like any kind of wellness resources too for mental and emotional health, including discounts that you can find and receive right now because of COVID-19. So that's an amazing document. We're really great, grateful to Cynthia for uh, staying on top of that. So in closing, <clears throat> we just want to let y'all know that, that everyone here at Peloton U supports you and supports your families. Um, if you have any questions or if there's something that you need that you don't see in our resources or if you have information that you want to share out with student, with other students and with the rest of the Peloton U community, um, or if you want to share out your experiences filing for unemployment to help other students learn what to do, what not to do, just let us know. Um, contact your coach, any Peloton U staff member, or you can contact me as the unemployment benefits advocate. So I've listed my name, email, and cell phone number down below, but we're here for you at any point. And as our coach Silvio says, we've got this fam. Thanks for listening. Let us know if you have any questions.